Our thought for today is, I miss the 1990s when bread was still good for you and no one knew what kale was. Today is August 7th, the feast day of Pope Sixtus II and his companions who were martyred for the faith on August 6th in the year 258. Now, normally we would celebrate this on August 6th, but because he died on the, which is now the feast day of the Transfiguration, the church has moved Pope Sixtus's feast day to August 7th. He was only Pope for one year. He was the 24th Pope and he was of Greek origin. The first issue he had during his papacy was the bishops of Northern Africa led by St. Cyprian said that baptisms of heretical sects that had brought off, broke off of the Catholic Church were not valid baptisms. As you know, there were many divisions and splinters even from the beginning of the church. And the bishops of Northern Africa said, well, if you're baptized by a heretical sect, then it was an invalid baptism. So Pope Sixtus had to decide was this true or not. And fortunately, with guidance of the Holy Spirit, Pope Sixtus investigated and said no. Even if somebody is baptized in a different, let's say, denomination or a different sect, as long as they used water and baptized the person you know, uh, accurately by either pouring the water over them and or doing immersion, as long as they said the proper words, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. So as long as they use the proper form and matter, the proper words and material, which is water, either by pouring or by immersion, that is a valid baptism. So Pope Sixtus declared that, no, they are validly baptized, even though they might not be in um, the Roman Catholic Church, that is a valid baptism. And that's why today, if somebody is baptized Lutheran, Methodist, Episcopalian, Baptist, Presbyterian, as long as the proper words were said and water was used, those are valid baptisms. And if the, any of those members of those denominations become Catholic, they do not have to get rebaptized. They could just enter the church through the profession of faith, through then making the sacrament of confession, and then receiving first communion and confirmation. So really that was the first thing that Pope Sixtus is known for, his declaration that a valid baptism can occur outside the Catholic Church, as long as, again, the proper words and material is used. When somebody was elected a pope in the early church, it was really a death sentence. The first 33 popes were all martyred for their Catholic faith and their belief in Jesus Christ. That's so why we wear the red vestments today to remind us of the blood of Pope Sixtus. From St. Peter until the year 315, when Constantine made Christianity legal, every pope, all the first 33 popes, were martyred for their faith. They had targets on them. The enemies of the church knew who the Bishop of Rome was, who the pope was. And in the five major waves of persecution in the first 300 years, every pope was targeted and murdered for being the pope, for being the leader of the Catholic Church. The five major waves of persecution were first under Nero in the 60s and then eventually Julian the Apostate uh, under Decius, then Valerian, and then Diocletian. Today's martyrdom of Pope Sixtus occurred under Valerian. And as you know, there are four marks of the Catholic Church, one holy Catholic and apostolic, but many of the saints have said there's actually a fifth mark of the Catholic Church, and that is persecuted. Jesus said, as they treated me, so they will treat you, my followers. How did they treat Jesus? Well, they scourged him, they mocked him, they beat him, they made him carry the cross, and they crucified him. So after Jesus says, as they treated me, so they will treat my church. So really the fifth mark of the church, besides one holy Catholic and apostolic, is persecuted. What happened during the time of Valerian is Valerian tried to take away the religious liberties of the Christians. He said, no assemblies, Christians cannot gather for the Eucharist. And so they forbid the going to mass. And so they attacked religious liberty. This would occur in Ireland where you can still go to Ireland today and see 
the mass rocks out in the country where the priests would have to say mass outside on these mass rocks because it was forbidden during certain governmental regulations for Catholics to gather in Ireland in certain times. And so often we, as time goes by, we might see this more and more attacks on our religious liberty. So the early Christians had to deal with this of not being allowed to attend mass, not being allowed to assemble, and so they had mass in their homes. And, but it was too dangerous. And so they started to have mass in the underground tunnels known as the catacombs, thousands of miles of underground tunnels under the city of Rome. You can go there today and still see and still visit these underground tunnels. I remember asking the children once, what were the name of the underground tunnels in Rome that begin with the letter C? And a kid says, oh, Father, those were called the cataracts. I said, well, close, the catacombs. And you can go there today and even have mass. I've had the privilege of saying mass where Pope Sixtus was martyred. Now what happened with Pope Sixtus, he was with about six deacons and a small congregation. And the enemies of the church, Valerian, heard that mass was being said. And so he sent in his soldiers who during the mass, while the Pope was giving the homily, the soldiers arrested the Pope, Pope Sixtus, and beheaded him on the spot. They also martyred four deacons at the same time, Januarius, Vincent, Magnus, and Stephen. Two other deacons, Felissimo and Agapetus, were martyred a couple days later. And then Pope, uh, then St. Lawrence, the deacon, was martyred four days later on August 10th. And we'll be celebrating his feast day coming up on August 10th. So the Pope was beheaded at the mass by the soldiers of Valerian and the deacons were martyred as well. The body of Valerian was eventually placed, uh, the, the body of Pope Sixtus was eventually placed in the catacombs of St. Callistus. And I've had the privilege of saying mass in those catacombs along the Appian Way. Pope Sixtus became one of the early heroes of the Catholic Church. He's mentioned in the Roman canon. And notice that all the Roman emperors are gone who tried to persecute the church, and yet the church remains. Jesus said the gates of hell will never prevail against the church. All these enemies of the church tried to destroy the church. Nero tried to destroy the church, Decius, Valerian, Diocletian, Napoleon, the French revolutionaries tried to destroy the church. Everyone just tried to destroy the church, and yet they're all gone, and yet Jesus' church remains, because Jesus promised that his church would remain until the end of time. So today we honor these heroic uh, men, Pope Sixtus, and his deacon companions martyred for their faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. So we pray today, Pope Sixtus and companions, pray for us.